quality 10. What do you mean when you say divine truth does not allow the lie no matter what the price? Well, if, if we see so far, we've only discussed 10 qualities of the 14 so far, but if we see so far that divine truth is extremely important mm -hmm. in so many areas of our life and it's so, so important for our happiness, then we would not desire to suppress it in any way if we understood its importance. And so one of these qualities of divine truth is that it does not allow the lie without correction. So if you think of God's laws, all of God's laws are truths and all, true, all of God's truths are laws. Mm -hmm. As a result, every single law has a certain type of operation. It has an operation of what happens when you live in harmony with it and what happens when you live in disharmony with it. Now, whenever the operation of the law is engaged, the operation of the truth is engaged, we, this quality lets us see that there is always a negative consequence, not only to the individual, but also often globally, to a person maintaining the error. And there is always a positive consequence if the person knows the truth. Yeah. In other words, maintains the law. The negative consequence exists when they break the law. The positive consequence exists when they maintain the law or mm -hmm. live in agreement or in harmony with the law. Since, we, this, since this is a quality of divine truth, divine truth does not ever allow the error-based position to exist without confrontation. Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't mean that it forces confrontation. So it doesn't take violent action against the confrontation, yep. as we've learned in a previous yes. ex example of what, one of the qualities of divine truth. But it will never, ever allow the confrontation to not occur yeah. or compromise to avoid the confrontation. The law always exists and it will have its result. Yeah. Now, as such, it doesn't allow a lie. It doesn't allow the lie to continue without addressing the lie, without confronting the lie in some way. Just the very existence of truth confronts the lie in some way because it's a law. And therefore, whenever a lie is told that, that is about that particular law, there is a negative consequence for telling the lie about the law. Mm -hmm. And so this beautiful quality of divine truth is that it doesn't continue to allow lies to exist. It always exposes the truth and eventually destroys the lies through eroding the lie eventually. And this is something that we need to understand on the planet properly because the majority of people believe that error, including religious, political or emotional error, can be maintained within the soul permanently. And it's impossible mm. because God's truth always has this quality of confronting the error over and over and over and over and over and over again. The error cannot stand forever it must be destroyed at some point. That's the way God's truth works. Now, it doesn't destroy the error by forcing the truth upon it. It destroys the error just by exposing it, by exposing the error every time. Mm -hmm. and, and even if whole society, even if the whole world wants to maintain the error, sooner or later, God's law, God's truth, will have an effect on the error of exposing it mm -hmm. sooner or later. It may take one year, a thousand years, 10,000 years, a million years even, possibly. It depends on our resistance of how open we are to receiving it as to how long it takes. But eventually the error will be exposed. So God's truth never allows the lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we understood that from a universal perspective, as well as a personal perspective, it would change our life. Mm. Mm. Okay. So a person in harmony with divine truth will not lie for any reason. Never. Never lie for any reason. They would understand that every time a lie is told, there is always an emotional reason why the lie is told. Right. Yep. So an emotion where... It avoiding experiencing within us is yes. driving a lie. Yes, it's yeah. a fear-based emotion that mm -hmm. needs to come out of us. That's the only thing that will motivate us to lie. Mm -hmm. it, it also, 
If we understood that, we would never choose to lie. We might mistakenly tell a lie. In other words, tell something that we later on find was not true. Mm -hmm. But we'd also want to correct that if we could. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So, and we would never desire to withhold truth from others either. No. So, different to an outright lie, also we would never simply withhold something that I knew was affecting your life. Yes, God never withholds the truth of our experience from us. Mm -hmm. Every single law has an operation whether we want to maintain ignorance to it or not. So in other words, the law of gravity, as an example, a physical law that determines our physical existence, it determines the truth in every possible moment of our existence here on earth. Right? Mm -hmm. It never lies to us, but it always exposes any lie. In other words, if we believe we can go flying off of a building, the belief doesn't last for very long. No. <laughs> we hit the ground, we die generally, and we realise, no, that wasn't possible. Yeah. So the belief cannot, the false belief cannot be maintained for a very long point in time physically. Unfortunately, when it comes to emotionally and spiritually, we can maintain false beliefs for very long periods of time, but not without hurting ourselves, mm -hmm. because every truth or law has a consequence for it not being upheld. And this is the beauty of the truth. Sooner or later, the painful suffering-based experience will expose to us the error of what we believe, mm -hmm. the error of what we think is true but is not. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, um, a person living in divine truth will not make a decision affecting another's free will. Yes, so we've already discussed free will to a degree, but if I made a decision that forced my decision upon you without your free will being involved, then I would basically, through that process, not be honouring the truth about your will. Mm -hmm. right? Now, God's truth always honours the truth. It doesn't honour the lie. I would actually be, by me trying to force your will, I would be telling you through the imposition, I'd be telling you that I that you have to do what I want, mm. that for some reason your will is not your own and you cannot choose to do what you want. You have to do what I have decided you need to do. Now, God has never made that choice for you. And so if I make that choice for you, I'm basically lying to you. Yeah. And I, if, I, if I upheld truth, I would never do that. Mm. I would never, I would always say to you, you know, you're allowed to make your own choice here. Even if it's in complete disharmony with God's truth, you're allowed to make the choice. Yeah. Right? And I would uphold your ability to make the choice, even though I may not uphold your choice. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I would, might not agree with or support your choice through my actions or even through my words. Mm -hmm. But emotionally, I would support your ability to make the choice. Yeah. So really within this truth that divine truth does not allow the lie no matter what the price we can see that a life lived in harmony with this would mean uh, that we honour truthfulness and we never allow lies not only in our words but in our, in our feelings and actions. Exactly. Yeah. So we would never want to lie to ourselves about our own feelings. Mm -hmm. We would never want to lie to another about our own feelings. Mm -hmm. We would never want to lie to another about what we feel from them. Mm -hmm. We would never want to lie to another about how, um, you know, when they want us to feel things that we do not. Yeah. So that there is a whole series of things that we would no longer be able to do if, if, if we understood that God's truth does not allow the lie. Does not allow the lie. Mm. A final point that we had under this um, truth was that if we project unloving emotions at a messenger of truth then we will have additional emotional injuries. Yes. In other words, whenever we project unloving emotions, and let's define them, any emotions that are violent in their nature, anger-based emotions, frustration, fear, and all those emotions are unloving emotions. Whenever we project unloving emotions at a messenger of truth, we are basically saying that we want them to lie. Yeah. We're using our will to, dis to say, lie to me. Yeah, you're basically saying, lie to me, lie to me. I don't want to hear the truth. Lie to me. And whenever they don't lie to you, you're willing to punish them for not mm. lying to you. That's generally the case. It's quite different from just 
passively saying, oh, I don't want to look at truth. Exactly. It's saying, when truth enters my sphere... Yep, which I'm going to attract at all times because God's universal laws are all truthful. <laughs> yep. Then I'm pushing back and I'm saying violently, don't do that. Yes. So it's, there's, I can see how there'd be additional emotional injuries. It's not just my passive state. I'm actively actively. harming another person. With, and myself. And myself with this desire to reject truth. Correct. Yeah. Not only that, I'm not realising in that particular place that by, by having this feeling that I have towards the other person lie to me, I am actually creating a world that will lie to me, mm. that has a desire to lie to me. And this is the main reason why we see the majority of the world wanting to lie to each other. Politicians wanting to lie to the populace. Religious people wanting to lie about what they know and what they don't know. And we see it with regard to the economic system. Government's not telling people the truth because every one of us wants to hear the lie. Mm -hmm. We want to hear that the 10 grand that we've got sitting in our bank account is actually worth 10 grand. <laughs> we don't want to hear that it's worth nothing. <laughs> we want to hear certain things. And so we want the lie. Mm -hmm. And this is our problem is that whenever we want the lie, we are basically saying and not honouring the fact that the entire universe is operating around giving us truth and yet we're wanting a lie. Mm. We're wanting to hear the lie instead. And then when we get the lie, how can we be upset that we got it? Yeah. We wanted it in the first place. Yeah. We demonstrated by our resistance to the truth, by our desire to punish a person telling us the truth, we are demonstrating that we wanted the lie in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I'll give an example. Lance Armstrong was a, a bike rider and he, he, I think he had seven or eight Tour de France wins or something like that. Mm -hmm. During that entire time, people asked him whether he was on drugs. He said no. Everyone wanted to hear the lie. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to hear that he wasn't on drugs. When he came out and told the truth that he was on drugs the entire time, everyone gets upset with him. How dare they? <laughs> They all wanted to hear the lie in the first place, yeah. right? He could have told the truth right at the beginning, but imagine the uproar, <laughs> right, then. You know, once he, uh, if he, he would have been prevented from even riding in the next seven bike races if he won one Tour de France mm -hmm. and then acknowledged that he was on drugs as a result, you know, during it. You see, we want to hear the lie. We want to believe that everything's fine when it's not. Yeah. Right? And then when somebody tells us the truth, what do we do? We punish them. Mm. And of course they're not going to want to tell us the truth when they get punished for telling us the truth. And this action starts at a very, very young age. Most children get punished for telling the truth at some point in their life, mm. sometimes violently punished for telling the truth. What we're telling our children under those circumstances, we want them to lie. Yeah. We, we want them to you know, never expose the truth to us. That's what we want. Right? And our own hypocrisy in getting angry with somebody who tells us the truth is just amazing. Yeah. And it's just as hypocritical as not being angry with a person who tells us a lie. Yeah. Right? So they're both very hypocritical ta actions to take. What we need to do instead is understand that everyone has emotional reasons for lying and until they release those emotional reasons, they're going to continue lying. And one of their emotional reasons for lying is they're afraid of telling the truth because they're going to get punished. Mm -hmm. And we have to look within us as to why we want to punish people who tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. We need to examine the reason inside of us why we wish to punish people who tell us the truth. And that is driven by a lot by the fact that we like hearing the lie because mm -hmm. we want to believe it for some reason. Yeah, I was just thinking about that in relation to common media. Mm. I mean, these kind of shows, these um, current affairs shows that are, there's about three or four of them that are on in Australia in the 6 to 7 p.m. time slot during the week. And a lot of them just peddle uh, very sensationalist kind or, of... Or direct lies. Or direct lies. Mm. Uh, stories. Mm. And they are obviously afraid that if they tell the truth, people will change the channel. Or not be interested. It yeah. won't be as sensational as the lie they told. 
And so the person might not be interested and most of them might not watch telly anymore and then they'll get no advertising and so they're afraid of all these things. Yeah, but people obviously want that lie because they yes. choose to tune in. Yes. That's high ratings time and these people have these slots because a lot of people watch TV at those times. Yes. Whereas others among us just don't watch mm -hmm. because we don't like the lie. Yeah. Um, but obviously the, a vast majority of the population does want these lies. Yes. Yeah. And this is a big problem with the planet at the moment. There is a vast majority of the worldwide population that likes receiving the lie yeah. because they like lying to themselves. Yeah. They don't. And why do we like lying to ourselves? Because we do not want to experience the painful emotions mm. once the truth exposes the lie. And in the previous uh, question today, we've been talking about fear mm. and how truth exposes fear. Mm. And when we're presented with lies, we just get to keep believing that fear is the truth. Exactly. Rather than actually confronting our fears, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah. We get to not have to experience our fears. Yeah. Not have to experience our emotional pain. Mm. And that's why we want the lie. Yeah. We, 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 we think that in having the lie, we're going to avoid. The reality is we don't in the long run avoid anything. In yeah. fact, what we do is we create more pain. Mm. So when the truth is actually exposed, so in Lance Armstrong's case, seven Tour de France's, all with drugs, when the truth was exposed, everyone's terribly upset. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that everyone prevented him from lying in the first place by being terribly upset about hearing the truth. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why would you be terribly upset about hearing that someone's doped themselves in order to ride a bike ride. So you dope yourself half the day with your pain, <laughs> trying to avoid things in your life personally. How can you then expect a person who's in, the, who's in a you know, public sphere to not dope himself when you do it every day just to avoid your own personal pain? Mm -hmm. But isn't there an issue with him presenting himself uh, as a drug-free person and then... No um, difference than the person on earth who's, who's doping themselves every day with Panadol presenting themselves as a drug-free person. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, the reality is they're not a drug-free person. Mm. And, and to be frank, I doubt whether there's many people on the planet in the Western world who are drug-free people. Yeah. And, and it's ludicrous to believe that such a thing is possible given our current circumstances and our current belief systems. Mm -hmm. Most of us want to avoid pain. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us want to use drugs to get over pain. Yeah. So, of course, there's going to be people in sporting life doing it. There's going to be people in political life doing it. There's going to be even religious people doing it. There's going to be all sorts of people doing it. Yeah. Why, why do we expect any different? Mm. Unless we change our desire for truth, it's not going to be different. Yeah. They're all going to cover it all over, not tell us the truth about it, and eventually we might find out. And then we all get in an uproar. What, are, what hypocrites? Why, why are we in an uproar? Yeah. We didn't want the truth in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> I often feel that about us being open about our identity mm. um, and how we attract certain people saying you shouldn't talk about it yes. because then more people would listen to you. Yes. But that's actually encouraging us to tell a lie exactly. about ourselves. Um, because it feels like when we are honest about who we are, it exposes a lot of fear in people. They say, oh, can we trust? I've had past painful experiences where I've trusted people who weren't honest or I've heard that globally there's been things where people have said they're Jesus and they haven't been trustworthy people. Mm -hmm. So it exposes a lot of fear and I think people have the opportunity to actually work through those fears and decide from a love-based perspective if we are trustworthy. Mm. But most people don't even want to engage that process. No, because they feel that feeling their fear is too painful an experience. And so what they do is they deny their fear and they want the lie instead. So they want to, the lie, me to say, oh, no, no, I'm not Jesus, but I'm just Alan John Miller, yeah. you know, and give them the lie. And that way they can, oh, you beauty, he's Alan John Miller. Oh, I can listen to him now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even we see with media um, representations of us, largely the media has chosen to um, take a very untruthful um, perspective mm. of us, like tell lies about us. Mm. And a lot of people have accepted that without question mm. and attacked us. Mm -hmm. But when people are more honest in the media about us, that we don't seem to be power hungry or controlling people or any of these things, mm -hmm. then we've observed those media outlets begin to get attacked by their Correct. viewers. Which means their viewers don't actually want to hear the truth in the first place. They don't <laughs> want to experience any fear 
or no? any um, negative emotion. That well, they don't even want to know that there might be a nice guy who's claiming to be Jesus <laughs> that's actually nice on the planet. Yeah. They don't want to even know that. Yeah. They don't, because they believe everybody who's claiming to be Jesus can't be nice. Yeah. Right? And, and that's not true. It's only their supposition. Mm -hmm. but, but they don't want to hear the truth about our life even because they already believe a whole heap of things they want to believe and they don't want their beliefs confronted. Mm. There will be pain when their beliefs are confronted. The reality is once they start realising that they believe a whole heap of things about us that were false and once they start recognising the reasons why they believed all these things that were false, they will have quite a lot of pain to experience emotionally mm. Mm. and they'll feel about that. But, but unfortunately that's the results of a person who, doesn't, who, who wants to believe the lie. Yeah. Who's, and who shoots the messenger of truth. Yeah, so even, even them wishing to believe lies about us will have consequences. But of course, because it's to, the same as wishing to believe lies about anybody. Yeah. It has consequences. Them wishing to attack journalists or media outlets that wish to be truthful, not just about us, but about other things. Exactly. There's negative consequences upon the soul for that as of well. Of course, including yeah. that you're going to be told lies in the future. And that's going to hurt at some point. Yeah, when the lies are exposed <laughs> when the eventually, lies are exposed, yeah. you'll feel bad. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you have things like the British media going through this big exposure of, of you know, all the things that they phone were doing, tapping, phone tapping, and, all these other yeah. things that they finished, that they lied about and so forth. And, and everyone's in an uproar about it. Uh, but, but the reality is the majority of people liked what they heard at the time. They bought the newspaper. They bought the newspaper. They wanted to hear it. They wanted to hear the lie. And they need to examine within themselves the reason why they wanted to hear the lie. Mm. And it's not a nice reason, generally, that you want to hear the lie. A lot of it's about suppression of your own feelings about yourself and, 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 and wanting to believe that you're superior to other people that you're hearing about. Yeah. That's why you enjoy the lies coming at you many times. Mm. There are other reasons, of, too, where you, where you want to suppress lies about yourself, like you know, where, where you lie about yourself in order to suppress the truth about yourself, I mean, yeah. and, and want to do that because of, of avoidance of certain emotional pain. Mm. So, so in the end, we get the world we want. Mm. And the world we want at the moment collectively is a world that lies to us. And um, rewards the lie. Almost. And rewards the lie. Of course, it all has a terribly damaging effect on us. And it terribly damages our relationship with God. More, it's a, God's truth does not lie. It exposes lies. So, of course, whenever we lie, we're in direct opposition to God's truth every time. Mm. Direct opposition. It's like you might as well go up and, go up and punch him on the <laughs> nose and say, I'm opposing you. <laughs> <laughs> we're adversaries now. Yeah, because yeah. we're adversaries. Whenever yeah. you lie, you're, you're setting yourself up as God's adversary. Mm. And, and at some point you're going to be exposed as God's adversary, even mm. to yourself. Mm. Whenever you tell the truth, then you're in harmony with God's laws. You're setting yourself up as God's friend. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you.